if cultural studies were simply about trying to understand the distortions which the media make of a, of, a, of a meaning whose truth we could somehow find independently of the media, it would be a very different kind of study from what it is in fact, which is trying to find out how the meanings enter into the event themselves, how they help to constitute the event. And this, uh, uh, what we're talking about is really why in cultural and media studies of this kind at any rate, the notion of culture uh, becomes a primary force. It's not a secondary element, but it's a primary element. Culture is a way in which we make sense of or give meaning to things of one sort or another. It's true, of course, that we all don't make sense of things in the same way, and therefore that each of us has a little kind of conceptual world of our own, or rather we have our own sort of take on the conceptual world. But if we shared no concepts together with other folks, we literally could not make sense of the world together. We could not build a social world together unless we were able to make sense of the world in broadly speaking the same way. Cultures consist of the maps of meaning. The, the frameworks of intelligibility, the things which allow us to make sense of a world which exists but is ambiguous as to its meaning until we've made sense of it. So meaning arises because of the shared conceptual maps which groups or members of a culture or society share together. And uh, that's a very important uh, kind of way of, of coming to an understanding of why in cultural studies, if you, if, you, if you privilege the notion of representation as giving meaning, you're making culture a very central, you're giving it a kind of central role. Uh, yes, it's not just sort of the values and, uh, and things which we happen to have been born into. It literally is. The, the ways in, without which we, we would find the world unintelligible. Okay, uh, what, what then uh, is sort of the basis of a culture, consequently of cultural studies, is to try to begin with what are the shared conceptual maps? That's to put it another way, to give you another way into this notion. What are the ways in which we classify and organize the world? Because classification is not the only, but one of the principal ways in which we go about giving meaning to things until we know roughly what class of things it is, roughly what it belongs with, and roughly what it's different from. Chairs are like, you know, Chairs are like stools because you sit on them. And both of them are different from tables which you put things on, although you can also sit on tables. And so our systems of classification are very complex, but without some notion of this belongs with that, that is different from this, we wouldn't be able to have a conceptual map. We wouldn't be able to map out the world in some intelligible way. Now, where do we get that from? Well, the one thing you can be certain is that though the capacity to, uh, to, to use concepts and to classify concepts in this way is a biological or genetic phenomenon. It's a feature of a, a, how we are constituted as human beings. The particular classifications that we use to classify out the world meaningfully is not printed in anybody's genes. It is something which is learned. It may not be learned by in didactic ways at school or in, in colleges, or through instruction, formal instruction. But to become a human subject is precisely somehow to learn or internalize the shared maps of meaning with other people in your culture. To become a cultured subject, rather than a biological individual, rather than just a, a blob of genetic material, is to move from there, to internalize, have within oneself the kind of the beginnings of the grid of one's culture. Okay, one could say then that the, the, the 
conceptual maps in our heads which allow us to come to a sense of what is going on in the world is itself a system of representation. Our concepts are a way of representing the world. And uh, it, you can think of that in a very simple way. I mean, you know, bear in mind an object which you cannot see. Now, uh, unless you had a concept of it, it would disappear the moment that the object had gone from sight. But concepts allow us to store and indeed to refer to and to think about uh, quite complicated thoughts about objects which are no longer accessible to our uh, perceptual apparatus. So the concepts allow us also to think about a wide range of things which are not in any simple sense out there in the world. And it's a very rich notion. Our fantasy life is full of things which are absolutely real to us, which are probably real if we can only find a language to express them. Lots of other people which nobody's ever seen. So we're beginning to dissolve now any simple-minded notion that our concepts are just mirror images of the world out there. They're also mirror images of worlds that don't exist. So our concepts are, uh, operate as a system of representation, but we haven't finished the circle yet because suppose we all shared the same conceptual map. That's to say we, we made sense of the world in roughly the same way. And we classify those concepts. We have the same system of classification in our heads. Uh, how would I know that uh, you are making sense of the world in anything remotely like the way in which I am? I can only know that if you could in some way express or communicate the sense you are making to somebody else. And that second move requires that the concepts find their way through language into communication. So we've not talked about communication yet, but you see the question of communication and language completes the circle of representation. First of all, there are the shared conceptual maps or cultures that we inhabit, but very closely associated with that are the ways in which different languages, and by language here, of course, you know, I mean a very wide range of things. I mean the language that we speak, I mean the language that we write, I mean electronic languages, digital languages, languages communicated by musical instrument, languages communicated by facial gesture, languages communicated by facial expression, uh, the use of the body to communicate meaning, the use of clothes to express meaning, anything in the sense in which I'm talking about can be a language. By that I mean it gives, uh, it gives sign to the meanings that we have in a form which can be communicated to other people. Language externalizes, it makes available and accessible as a social fact, a social process, the meanings that we are making of the world and of events. And it's at that point that uh, the representation really uh, begins to take off. <laughs>